if you have nominal data, there's nothing you can really do but characterize it with frequency. So remember, nominal data would be like gender, one for male, two for female, or major, one for psychology, two for nursing, three for journalism. What I'm doing here is coding the data. That is, I am simply sticking a number on words. So the numbers aren't real numbers, remember? So if your numbers aren't real numbers, all you can do is count them. How many psych majors are there? I can't say what's the average major. That makes no sense. How do you get the average major, right? You say 2.74. What does that even mean, right? Um, is it psychology or is it business? Or So in that case, all you can do is use frequency. You can't do the math with it like we talked about in week one lectures, right? So in this case, there's not really much you can do to describe dispersion around nominal data uh, and around the mode because all you can do is talk about the percentages. So I could say, oh, I had 74% female, right? Instead of just saying the mode was female. And what that allows me to do is realize, well, what number of people were not female? I could say, instead of saying the mode was psychology major, I could say 34% of people were psychology majors. And then I could provide the other percentages, you know, 20% business major, 15% nursing major, etc. So these are the best I can do to talk about the dispersion around central tendency. So yeah, psych majors were most common, but what was the variability? Well, I also had a big chunk of, you know, business majors. So that is the best we can do with nominal data to talk about dispersion. Now with ordinal data, remember when we do ordinal data, by definition, the data can be sequenced. They can be put in order from smallest to largest. And so therefore we use the median, which is the value that occurs at the 50th percentile, the middle value, right? Um, and once we've done this, we can see how the scores vary from that median. Okay, so there are measures we'll talk about here, we have a sheet in a second, uh, that we use to describe dispersion or variability around the median. If we have interval ratio data, we're going to you know, have equidistance and therefore we can do math, right? And because we can do math, we would use the mean for central tendency and the mean will minimize squared error. So what we'll do, all of our measures of dispersion or variability around the mean are going to incorporate or be built on this concept of squared error. So dispersion around the median is going to focus on simple distance. How far are things, right? But dispersion around the mean is going to focus on squared error. All right, so we'll take a look at these all in turn. So if you have ordinal data, you capitalize on the fact that you have these data in some form of order. So remember, it, you could write them all in order first. So if I had a set of numbers like 2, 5, 7, 9, and 12. So if I have this set of numbers and I have them in order, I can identify the median. What is the number at the 50th percentile? And it is the one that splits the data in half. So in this case, it would be 7. That's the median, right? But because these data are in order, I can also do things like identify what is the minimum, 2. What is the maximum? 12. So I can then take the minimum and maximum to do things like compute a range. So the range just takes the maximum and subtracts the minimum. 12 minus 2 is 10. I can also use these to get the real range, which would just be adding 1 to the range. So 12 minus 2 is 10 plus 1 is 11. So if you count it out like using fingers and toes, right, you would realize that there's actually 11 numbers. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, there's 10 fingers, 12, one toe, right? So there's actually 11 numbers in, in the span from 2 to 12, and that's what the real range tries to capture. Now, I can also do things like the interquartile range, where I would find the third quartile and the first quartile. So these are found simply by finding the median of upper and lower quartiles. So, for example, here's the top half of my data. And then I would just find the middle value in that top half. And because this is the upper end, this then nine would be Q3. It's the third quartile, right? And this is the max. And this is the min. And then if I take the bottom half of my data, which would be this, I would just split it in half and find that the median of that set of data is this. So in this case, that would be Q1. The median is by definition also Q1. 
the 50th percentile or the second quartile, right? So then I could say, okay, the interquartile range is nine minus five here, which is four. And I could say the semi-interquartile range is simply that number divided, the interquartile range divided by two, which is two. So the reason this is useful is because say that I had a similar set of data. So we're gonna just change one number and go through this example again and show you why the IQR and SIQR, this is the IQR, interquartile range, IQR. This is the SIQR, semi-interquartile range, okay? So why are those useful? Why not just the range? Okay, what if I took those same set of numbers, I only changed one number, I only changed the most extreme score, the maximum, right? Everything else is the same. Well, notice the median is still seven, the range is now very different. Now my range is 98 and the real range is 99. So you go, oh my goodness, this data is really spread out, right? That's what it seems to suggest. People vary greatly around this number of seven. Okay, that's interesting, but do people really vary greatly around it or is there just an extreme score, right? Well, if I look at the IQR, it's still four. So what this tells me is, yeah, there's a huge difference between the maximum and the minimum. That's the range here. So there are people on far extremes, but actually around the median, there's a pretty tight cluster. You know, there's only a difference of four around the 25th to 75th percentile. Q1 would be the 25th percentile. Q3 would be the 75th percentile. Q2 is the 50th percentile, right? So that is why the IQR here is useful and the SIQR is also useful because it allows us to realize that dispersion is not very well captured simply by the maximum and minimum score. So if we, instead of just get the maximum and minimum, also get the interquartile, it gives us a better sense of how tightly they might be dispersed or not. So very useful to think about both. Notice all of these values get at the sense of how the data differ from this centrality based on simple distance, right? We just put them in order and we find them based on their location in that spread. It's all about location, location, location. So this is what you would do when you're talking about a median.